let's switch gears a little bit and, and, and talk about um, antiretroviral therapy. Um, and the first thing is just very generally talk about kind of the goals of antiretroviral therapy. What, what are we trying to do? <laughs> Allison. So and I think the goals of therapy are for first for the individual, right? And then in that individual, what you're trying to do is to take the amount of virus that in their, that's in their system and get that to the lowest level that that can be, right? And f for what our tests can measure, that's undetectable, which is a le less than 20 copies per ml. And at that level, the virus is not going to, quote unquote, beat up the person's immune system, decrease their T cell count, and then have them progress to more immune suppression and have them have sequelae. That's the, that's the goal. First, individually, live long and prosper for that individual. <laughs> but what that also does with that getting that viral load to a minimal level, it decreases the risk of transmission to other individuals, to for a pregnant mom to her baby, to other partners, and inject someone who's injecting drugs, to people they're sharing needles with. So there's an, a, a a public health benefit, right, Absolutely. in terms of um, of getting that viral load undetectable. I, I want to also emphasize that there's an importance, actually, psychologically, of getting people on therapy as well. I think often as we go viral load, CD4, get that into, into a good place. But people feel better that they're doing something to actually take control of their health, right. that undetectable, equal, untransmissible. It's really a powerful message for themselves and an empowering for individuals. So I think it should be part of the equation when we think about what are the benefits in getting people started as soon as possible. Yeah. You equals you. You equals you. you. Equals you. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, tell people what you yeah. equals you is. So you me. equals you, um, Dr. Agu said it, um, undetectable equals untransmissible. And it's really been, I think, life-changing. We've all seen that be life-changing for people that have HIV to, to not kind of... Uh, not have concerns about whether they're going to transmit HIV to their partners. Um, and so it's really just been one of kind of the greatest things to watch over the last, I think, decade of that transition to understanding that, um, you know, stigma is such an important part of mm -hmm. HIV prevention and care. And this is one thing that is is slowly kind of chipping away. Yeah, at that. it can be destigmatizing mm -hmm. to, to really feel that way. And uh, yeah, I, I agree. That's incredibly important um, part of it. And, 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 you know, we, sometimes I think as doctors, we, we kind of focus me a little bit too much on numbers and things. But, but, but I have had, uh, you know, Alice, in your experience where, where when patients see their viral load kind of decreasing, they feel empowered. I did that. You know, you did that. You're the one that did that. I mean, we prescribed the pills, but you took them and, and, and you did it. And it makes it, it makes a difference, I think. It does. I think particularly when we think about a lot of the, the communities that we work with, they're so unempowered in so many way, mm. ways. We talked about social determinants earlier. So many things that feel out of their control. And here is this one thing that I was able to take control of, and I did this. And therefore, I don't have to put up with that person who treats me bad or that person who did that because I'm actually good and I'm not a bad person. It's, and we have to really, I think, emphasize that. I think that's why people have really hung on to that U equals U message. People have gotten tattoos. I mean, it's really been empowering. Yeah. So. so Colleen, one of the things that there's a lot of discussion about is this rapid initiation of therapy. So not only should we get people on therapy, but maybe we should do it really quickly. Can you talk about that? Yeah, I mean, so there's a few reasons why we think about um, getting people on antiretroviral therapy as soon as possible. Um, first is for their own health benefits like we talked about. As soon as someone is identified as HIV positive, particularly if they're in that acute kind of serocardial conversion um, period, we can kind of preserve the immune system um, better the earlier we start. Um, the other reason is so that we can reduce their viral load so that they're not transmitting on to other partners. And then the third reason that has recently come to light is it looks like people who receive antiretroviral therapy as soon as they are diagnosed are able to kind of stay on antiretroviral therapy and adhere to the regimen a little bit better than folks that are mm -hmm. told, oh, come back in two weeks and we're going to start your medicines in two weeks. Um, and so it makes a lot of sense. And a lot of places have tried to implement um, rapid starts. Uh, and some places have done it very successfully. I will say that um, in our practice um, in the southeastern U.S. in Atlanta, we found it to be extremely resource intensive um, because we don't have necessarily the, the um, uh, financial support to get the medications. We often ha time have folks that are dealing with many other hardships in their lives, like housing and substance use and um, uh, childcare and jobs and lack thereof um, 
and you know, kind of having to deal with that whole person before they're even ready to get on this new medication and deal with this new um, diagnosis is is challenging. And so I think the jury is still out um, as to how we can implement Rapid Start most successfully. Uh, But I think most people think it's a good idea. Biologically, it makes a lot of sense for transmission and and that sort of thing. I I don't know, Ian, what's your experience with Rapid Start? well, I, I think it's been what's been said. I think it's great to get people on therapy as soon as possible. It's great to convey a positive message that people can live with this disease. It's not hard to treat people with HIV. People will survive. They can maintain whatever goals they have in their life. They're not likely to die of uh, HIV-related complications. Uh, and from a public health perspective, the fact that we can tell our patients that if your viral load is undetectable, you will not transmit your infection to your sexual partners. That is very compelling. Um, people don't want to transmit their infection sure, to anybody course, else. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so that is a really important message. But, but I agree with Colleen that I, I don't think it's imperative that we start every patient as soon as they're diagnosed or at their first visit. There are some people who just are not quite ready. Mm -hmm. Uh, And we don't want people to start and stop. So we've got to convey the message that once they start, they've got to continue uh, and they've got to be ready for that. Um, So sometimes because of the complexities of the lives of people living with HIV infection, sometimes their priority is just not their disease. It's their partners, it's their housing stability, it's their kids, uh, it's other factors that are higher priorities, and we've got to respect that. 